fight over the voter ID law in Texas has heated up to a boil. The Justice Department has demanded that state lawmakers turn over their work papers related to the new law. The state of Texas tries to enforce an ID law that could keep more than a million people from voting in the presidential election. It's one of 11 states with new laws requiring voters... The Justice Department said the Texas law passed last year could disenfranchise Hispanic voters. They asked for IDs that 10 to 11 percent of Americans simply do not have. We were getting calls from people uh, saying, help, we can't vote even though we're registered. So we found a young lawyer to assist them with the bureaucratic morass that many of them were facing. My name is Abby Kamen, born and raised in Houston, Texas. I am working with the Campaign Legal Center to help voters get their ID. I met Tony several weeks ago. Tony is voted in every election he's been able to. And he actually came to Texas to uh, be a student at the University of Houston. Brilliant guy, got you know numerous degrees and became an engineer. I follow the politics and the candidates quite closely. An informed voter is more likely to make an intelligent decision than an uninformed one, so I've decided to be informed. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the new law, Tony cannot vote because he cannot prove his identity at the polls. Hey, Tony, how are you? Okay, just fine, Abby. Good to see you. My okay? state ID uh, was expired, so I called the DPS, Department of Public Safety, and they told me that because my name was changed in 1964 that I could not get an ID. This is your... ID card from DPS that expired. And then here's your current voter registration. When he was 14, his mother and father were formally married. So they decided to change his last name to his father's name. Ever since 1964, I've had this name and there's been no problems until this DPS ID thing came up. You talk to them and, you know, a birth certificate isn't good enough because your name changed. Mm -hmm. So we need a name change certificate. We have sent our attorneys from Campaign Legal Center down to uh, the courthouse. Despite all of our efforts, they can't find the name change certificate. I mean, there's really no clear cut answer as to what the next step is. The bureaucrats and the politicians are giving me hell and I have done nothing wrong and my family did nothing wrong. So I'm being punished for, and not without doing anything wrong. And I wonder what kind of America is it that punishes people that did nothing wrong? I lived here in Houston, Texas for 63 years in my neighborhood. It's going to be quite a few people not going to be able to vote because of this new law. Are those your papers over there? Yes. All right, can we go through those again? Harji has been to the DPS three times now. The first time he went, uh, somebody told him he needed three forms of identification, such as his Medicare card, bills, things of that nature. And another person says, no, no, no. We need your birth certificate. So I got your birth certificate. If we weren't here, would you be able to drive up to Huntsville by yourself? No, because I'm legally blind. He can't really get around. He has to call friends for rides, which really isn't reliable. You know, we want to make sure that you can vote. And yeah, then, I do too. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take you over to the DPS to get your ID now. Okay. And then, uh, you know, hopefully it runs smoothly and they, you know, don't get confused over there. You're telling these citizens that they don't matter, that they don't count. My car is just right over there. Right. The black one. These voters feel completely isolated. All right, here's all your papers. All right. And I'll get the air going. Oh, don't lose that one. Okay. All right, you in?
Bob going to be 79 years in July 20th of this coming year. I was born 1936 near Sebastian, Texas. But I've been born in all my life. And uh, then all of a sudden everything started changing. Requiring all of these papers and birth certificates and all of that. Let me need. There are over 10 million Americans, most of them born before World War II, that perhaps were not born in a hospital and there's no accurate record of their birth, that find it very difficult to get a birth certificate. Mr. Lara is a gentleman who there's no record of his birth and he wants to get a photo ID. He wants to vote. When I was born, they didn't register me. That's the reason why there are problems with voting. Eat chocolate. Eat. I want you to eat. With this new Texas photo ID law, people like Margarito Lara will probably never vote again. I feel sorry that I can't vote. Muy importante. Yeah. Real important when you vote. disappointing failure. They would not let Harji get his ID. And on his birth certificate, um, there's a clerical error where they misspelled part of his last name. At the end of the day, he would have to change his name to the incorrect spelling on his birth certificate to get an ID. This is what voting has become in Texas. I'm so sorry, Harji. Oh, that's not the oh, that's the system. Yeah. And I don't know what part of the system. Yeah. But it is. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's get you back to the house, okay? okay? This is about the state of Texas using taxpayer dollars to implement the most restrictive photo ID law in the country um, that is intentionally used to suppress minority and low income voters. I don't think you're going to be able to vote in this election because of this law. Um, because we can't find your name change certificate. And I know you've been playing around with the idea of going down and just changing your name again. It's gonna cost you $247, which I don't know if you wanna pay that much because we don't even have a guarantee they'll let you or that it'll work. You may not ever be able to vote. So it might take moving to another state to fix this. Yes, sir. There are states with no voter ID laws and there are states with voter ID laws that that aren't just aren't as strict. I know yeah. it's that's part of the problem with the law. So you lose your right to vote after due process in a court of law. You don't lose your right to vote because legislators are making it hard for you to. Just hours ago and days before early voting, the Supreme Court announced it's allowing Texas to use its controversial new voter identification law for next month's election. To see what they've had to go through, it just completely signifies to me the discrimination and injustice taking place in Texas today. You know, I can feel it right here. It's like a pain in my psyche. I'm living in a country that doesn't want me. And that is an awful feeling. So it goes beyond a simple 2014 election or whatever is or isn't happening. You know, it's a deep-seated thing. It's, it's feeling like you're in a place physically, but, but they don't want you to be part of it.